Gronax asks, do you use a certain percentage for your stop loss or resistance support levels? Uh, that's a good question. So I usually just do, um, um, so in theory, what I would do is I would look at the volume levels and I would put it up, you know, I put it somewhere above like the next major volume area. But in reality, you know, no one has time, you know, to be doing that. And trading is actually quite simple. So, you know, what I do is I literally put in the orders. I put in two orders. Uh, it takes me like five seconds each. And then in each order, I include a stop loss included within the order. And I put 15% to 20% for each of them. And I'll quickly, like when I type in 15% or 20%, um, I quickly just look at the number that comes up. And if the number, you know, is relatively above like the next support or next resistance, um, on the other side of the next support or resistance, that's usually good enough for me. You know, and if it's something like Bitcoin and I see like, you know, say I'm shorting at like 15, 800, right? Let's say I did a 15% stop loss and it's like right at 16K. Maybe I do an 18% stop loss. So it's like at 16, 100, you know? Just kind of use some common sense. To, um, but the only thing is you should not change your stop loss. So once you put your stop loss in, you know, don't change it. Don't keep moving it up because that defeats the purpose of a stop loss, right? So always think of your stop losses as wholly, um, you know, as definitive in some way because that's part of your strategy. You know, set it and forget it kind of thing. So I usually just do 10, 15, or 20%. It just depends on how much volume's in the trade and how much leverage, you know, where it's at, how, how much confidence I have in the level, how much confidence I have in the, you know, there's some trades where it's like this, right? It's like this. So say this is like a major line of support right here. This is actually a good example. See, this is a major line of support here. Okay, and this this coin comes up. It's up like this, right? Okay, and it's been coming down and you're looking for a long level here and you're gonna long somewhere at the support, right? So do you wanna be longing something that's making a lower low, right? Probably not, right? You want to be long something that's making a higher low up here, right? So in this case, you know, I might put my stop loss just on the other side of this line, right? Because at that point, you want to be long something that has a lower high. Sorry, a lower low, right? Because this is more of a bearish structure, right? I mean, you could still make some money off that, but you're better off longing something that has bullish structure with a higher low than something that has bearish structure with a lower low. So in this case, Maybe I don't need to put a stop loss in. Like say say this stop loss for this trade right here, if I put my entry here. Say a 15% stop loss is like way down here, right? I don't need it to do that. I don't need a stop loss way down here. You know, maybe I just put a stop loss here. Um, you know, because if it breaks this market structure, it's more bearish and it's gonna be going down, right? Maybe that's only a 5% stop loss, right? So, you know, one thing to do when you're trading is think about, okay, what, what's gonna happen next, right? If I long at this level, or if I short this level, you know, how's this look, right? Am I longing something that, you know, is this gonna be like a long-term play? Am I longing something that looks bullish or bearish? Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congrats. Most people finish early, but you made it the full distance. That's awesome. If you're looking to learn how to trade crypto, check out one of these other videos.